So, you've been gaming your entire life, and you're ready to take your insane gameplay to the rest of the world. Oh! Or maybe you just want to showcase a new song that you wrote yourself to somebody else other than your mom. Hey, mom! Come check out the song I just wrote. Whatever it is you're passionate about, you've made the decision to take your content to the wonderful world of live streaming. Except you have absolutely no idea where to begin. What's up, guys? My name is Preacher. Welcome to the Stream Loots YouTube channel where we talk about everything related to our flagship tool called Stream Loots and live streaming. In today's video, we're going to take you through an incredible software called OBS. What is OBS, you ask? Well, OBS or Open Broadcaster Software is a free open source software available to live streamers and content creators that allows them to take their content and broadcast it on a platform such as Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, and YouTube. It's one of the most widely used free softwares out there and it's a great tool to get you started on your content creation journey. With that being said, let's get into it. So in order to begin, we need to download the OBS Studio software to our computer. We're going to go to obsproject.com slash download. And we're going to select the operating system that we're using. For me, that's Windows. We're going to click Download Installer. And then once the program is finished installing, we're going to click Run. Now that we have OBS downloaded, we can click on it from our desktop or wherever we have it installed and begin building our live stream. All right, so now that we've opened OBS, I'm going to give a quick little disclaimer that what you're about to see is going to be a little confusing. Um, and that's because I'm using a feature in OBS called Display Capture while I'm recording this video in order to show you all of the different features that are available in OBS. So it's going to create something that we like to call Streamception. Don't worry, everything will be made clear. Just stick with me. All right, so here we are in Streamception world. Like I said, a little confusing, but basically what you're seeing here is a scene where all of my screen is being captured. In order to get started, we need to create a new profile. And this is important to do as you're getting started, so when you want to make changes later, it's a lot easier. So we're going to go up to Profile, we're going to click New, and we're going to name this profile whatever we want. For the sake of this video, I'm going to name it Stream Loots Profile. Once you've done this, the settings we change will be saved to this profile specifically. Now that we've added a profile, we can now add what's called Scene Collections. So what we want to do is we're going to go up to Scene Collection here, we're going to add new, and we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Stream Loots, and then click OK. This will clear everything and give you a fresh OBS canvas to work with. Something to keep in mind is to create a new profile and scene collection for each project that you work on so that you can easily swap back and forth and stay more organized. All right, so let's talk about the scenes for just a moment here. When we look at the scenes, we're going to be able to have different configurations of sources that can be grouped together for different games and scenarios while streaming. And then they can be swapped between on the fly. For example, in this scene, which is kind of my face-to-face -face scene, I have a webcam and an audio source. These are both sources that I've added into OBS. When I want to switch to my gameplay, you're going to see a lot of different sources on the screen that I've added. For example, in this scene, you're going to see um, the smoke video overlay that I've added. You're going to see a border source that I've added that includes uh, text um, and alerts in the bottom right. And you're also going to see my webcam here. This is a separate camera source that I've added as well. And then when I want to connect with my viewers and also have the chat on the screen, I'm going to go to my intermission screen, maybe in between games like this. And so on this scene, you're going to see a variation of sources, still including some uh, some text sources, some browser sources, which is the border, the electric border that you see below me here and around my webcam, as well as a border on the bottom. And I've also added an image on the right side of the screen. This is my logo. You see a background behind all of it. And you also see, again, alerts like tips that have been made to the stream on the bottom right. 
this gives you a little bit of a sense of what you can do between scenes as far as adding sources. So for example, let's add a new scene. We'll call this scene two. Now what you're seeing is absolutely nothing because we haven't added any sources to our scene. What you see here is I've already added a display capture source so that you can see what we're doing within OBS. Let's say I want to add an image to the scene. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is by clicking and dragging an image or a file to the canvas. And if we want to do that, we can minimize this and we can select an image from our desktop and drag it right on top of the canvas and it's going to add it. Now what you're about to see is the display capture is going to be hidden because we're putting this on top of the display capture source. So now we can drag and drop this wherever we want on our scene. And as we do that, it's going to begin to cover up the whole scene because this layer is in front of our display capture. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this source. And now you're going to see the, re the way that I did that was by clicking this eye right here. If I want to add it back, I just click that again. I'm going to hide it again and I'm going to show you, you can actually drag these below to create um, a different layering. So what you saw here is the display captures in front because it's on top and the stream loot's background is now behind what you see here. So when I open this back up to be seen, you're still not going to see it because it's behind the display capture. So when I bring it ahead, it's now going to be in front of the display capture. The other way to add a source is by clicking the plus sign at the bottom of the sources section and going to image. And for this, we'll type in stream loots background. Clicking OK. And then we'll browse for that image on our desktop right here. Once we've added that, the same thing will happen. It'll add to our scene. It'll cover up the display capture and we can drag this, resize it however we would like and put it wherever we want on the scene. And you'll see that listed right here under the sources. Now let's bring this back behind the display capture. Later, if we want to add more sources, we can add things like game capture for our gameplay, more images, a media source to add maybe a video, or a video capture device like a webcam. You'll also want to make sure to add an audio source. To do this, you're going to click the plus sign under sources, go to audio input capture, name the audio input, whatever you'd like, click OK, and then select the device you'd like to use. Once you've done that, click OK, and the source will be added to your scene. Now that you've added an audio input capture device to your sources, you're going to be able to see the volume of that device right here. This green bar goes up and down as I speak, and it's really important to monitor this volume because if it enters the red, you're going to experience a quality called peaking, which is not good. It's going to sound somewhat distorted and might create some feedback. I highly recommend keeping this fader between the top of the green and the middle of the yellow. This will maintain the best quality of sound from your microphone. It's also important to monitor the level of volume that you're putting out through your microphone in comparison to other audio sources such as gameplay or music that you might add to your stream. If you'd like to adjust the volume of your microphone or any other audio source, simply use this fader right here. You can decrease the volume and increase the volume very quickly right in OBS. Under the controls, you're gonna see a variety of different options. You can click start streaming when you want to go live, start recording when you want to record a video, studio mode, which when you click it will allow you to make adjustments to scenes without your viewers seeing it, and settings. Settings is the most important thing you'll need to learn for the scope of this video, so we're going to go into that next. When we look at the video tab, we're going to see a base canvas resolution, which this is going to be the resolution of the monitor or display that you're currently using. So for me, it's 1920 by 1080. The output scaled resolution is gonna be the resolution you push to the streaming platform you're on. So for me, because my PC can handle it, I push a 1920 by 1080 
uh, resolution. If you don't have as powerful of a PC, I might recommend going to 1280 by 720. The downscale filter you'll want to keep at by cubic. When looking at the FPS value or the frames per second value, you're going to want to select either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And that number is going to be determined by the game that you're playing and the power of your PC. For example, if you're playing a game that has a high frame rate, you're going to be putting more taxation on your computer. A game like Call of Duty and Apex Legends runs at a very high frame rate. So you might want to consider running it at 60 frames per second if your PC can handle it. If you're running games that have a lower frame rate, you might consider running it at 30 frames per second. For me, I run at 60 frames per second, so that's what I've selected here. Under the audio tab, we're going to select our output audio, which is listed here as desktop audio. And we're going to select default for that so that we use our computer's default output device in OBS. We're also going to select our audio input, our microphone. Under mic auxiliary audio, we're going to select default as well so that we use our computer's default microphone input. Once we've done that, click apply. Under the output tab, we're going to select the quality of our stream and the quality of our recordings. Under streaming, you're going to see video bitrate. And what we need to do to find out what to put in here is we need to run a speed test on our internet to find out our upload speed. In order to find out our upload speed, you can go to a speed test website, run a simple test on your internet, and find out what the upload speed is. For example, if our upload speed is 12 megabits per second, I'm going to recommend using half of that in our video bitrate field. So in that case, we would type in 6000. It's also really important to note that every platform has a different recommended bitrate setting depending on the resolution you're running and the frames per second that you're running. So make sure to check in with your platform to see what they have to say about the recommended bitrate. Now let's look at encoding. X264 uses your CPU to process data. And this can add a significant load to your PC and cause a lot of issues. The NVENC encoder is recommended as it uses your graphics card and can handle the processing better than your CPU usually. The audio bitrate should be set to 128 as this is what most streaming platforms accept. When recording, we're going to want to choose where our videos are saved. So we're going to click browse and we're going to select the folder that we want our files to be saved in. Under recording quality, we can either record in the same quality as our stream or we can change it. Uh, I recommend selecting the indistinguishable quality here. Under the recording format, we're going to want to select the MP4 file format. Uh, this is because it's going to be the most recognized file type for uploading and editing. Under encoder, we're going to select NVENC as this is going to use our graphics card in our computer. If you don't have a graphics card installed in your computer, simply select X264 to put the encoding process on your computer. Under the streaming tab, you're going to be able to select the service you'd like to send your stream to. You'll have options like Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, whatever platform you're using, you're going to want to select that here. Under server, you're going to want to select auto recommended. If you're having dropped frames or you're having bitrate issues, going back to this option and selecting a specific server can help clear that up. After you've selected the streaming platform and the server, you're going to need to connect your stream key or attach your account automatically. Under the stream key, you're going to either be able to select connect account recommended, which is going to connect your account through your platform through a recommended login. Otherwise, you can use your specific stream key, which is also found on your streaming platform under your profile. Once you've connected your account, you are now able to go live through OBS. And that's it for this video, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. If this video was helpful at all, please make sure to do us a favor and hit that like button to let us know. And if you have any questions related to anything that we covered with OBS, please make sure to drop it in the comment section below. As always, to stay up to date with all things streaming and stream loots, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn your alerts on, so you don't miss out on the future content we'll have. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys in the next video.